Today on Congressional Solutions, we're talking about yet another job Americans don't want to do that soon might be taken over by foreigners. Voting. I was watching Mueller's testimony and between his non-stop plugging of the report like he just started a new YouTube channel, well, I could either answer that question or you could read about it in this 400 page document I just wrote. You should check it out. Remember to like and subscribe. He seemed to get real for one moment. A moment that let some viewers into a real, okay this might be a problem realization. Over the course of my career, I have seen a number of challenges to our democracy. The Russian government's efforts to interfere in our election is among the most serious. Yeah, this guy has definitely been around too. From Vietnam to 9-11 to even after 9-11 when the government lied about Iraq having weapons of mass destruction. Baghdad has failed to disarm its weapons of mass destruction, willfully attempting to evade and deceive the international community. Bad example. Yeah, I'm not going to let him live that one down so easily. He's seen quite a few threats to our democracy though, so when he seemed particularly concerned about this, well, I feel like I should see what Congress is doing. Now let me clarify right off the bat. The problem we're talking about today isn't Trump, but foreign governments hacking our election systems. We want elections to be determined by the two parties competing, not pro-Trump Russian hackers v anti-Trump Iranian hackers. The votes from Wyoming came in, and the winner in that state is write-in candidate, all your base are belong to us. Today we're asking the question, hey Congress, what are you going to do to protect the 2020 election? And the answer is, surprisingly enough, an overwhelming amount of bills. Now I'm going to start by covering the two bills that have passed one of the two houses of Congress and then move on to some of the more interesting ones that get an honorable or dishonorable mention depending on what your political beliefs are. So let's get started with Richard Blumenthal's Defending the Integrity of Voting Systems Act. Boy, does that look like a face of a Sim City mayor before you make any changes. Now this legislation is a blissful three pages. Alright, I'll be honest, that's suspiciously short, but we'd get to the point. His bill has already passed in the Senate and is waiting for a House vote. That means that this is already big on the thumbs up from McConnell and it's up to Pelosi to make the next move. Cue stock footage of this politician talking about how elections are important. The Russian attack on our democracy imperils not just this administration, not just one election, it imperils our democracy as a whole. What this bill does is simple. If passed, it would prohibit interference with voting systems under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. In one of those surely that's illegal somewhere else moments, there was recently a Justice Department report that said, the principal statute used to prosecute hackers, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, currently does not prohibit the act of hacking a voting machine in many common situations. Well, that's quite the oversight. The reason for this oversight is that our current anti-hacking law only prohibits hacking computers that are connected to the internet. In many conceivable situations, electronic voting machines will not meet that criteria as they're typically kept off the internet. Man, Congress, you don't always have to be super specific with every law. This bill would simply allow the Justice Department to pursue federal charges against anyone who hacks voting systems used in federal elections under that act. Pelosi, the ball's all teed up for you on this one, now take a swing. Now's as good a time as any to make hacking voting systems a federal crime. Alright, next bill. This one comes from California's 19th District Representative Zoe Lofgren and your mom's cool friend. She brings us the Securing America's Federal Elections or SAFE Act. Really killing it with that abbreviation. This act is already passed in the House and is on the Senate's backlog of bills to look at. Although it's a less blissful 72 pages. We should all be able to agree that we need to protect our democracy and with a sense of urgency. This is not a partisan opinion. Nothing less than our national security is at stake. So let's bust open the SAFE Act and see what's inside. 
This act is a lot more partisan than the last one, passing with all Democrats voting for it and one Republican who probably wishes not to be named. It was Florida Representative Brian Mast. Broadly speaking, this bill would authorize $600 million for states to bolster election security. It would also give states $175 million biannually to help sustain election infrastructure. Now it's hard to talk about these numbers sometimes because any amount of money over about a million dollars and my eyes just glaze over with my brain defaulting to, well that's more money than I'll ever have. <gasps> the government is spending an unachievable amount of money on the military? And they just voted to increase the budget by amount of money that I couldn't earn in 10 lifetimes. Well, to put this large amount of money in perspective, it's about the equivalent to one tenth of the $5.7 billion Trump asked for at Congress for the border wall. Now that triggered the debate that triggered the longest shutdown in a US history. This is not supposed to be shocking in any way, just trying to give y'all a sense of scale. So what would this money specifically go towards? Getting all of the voting systems online so it would be illegal to hack them? Well, it would go towards a few things, all of which would make this bill controversial because they would standardize how states and localities vote. Republicans spoke out against this bill calling it federal overreach into elections, which are managed by states and localities. SAFE's biggest critic is Illinois Republican Representative Rodney Davis. Director Krebs said, quote, local officials know their system and what they need to do to conduct a successful election, end quote, and that state and local officials should remain in control of their elections. He wrote his own bill, which we'll get into in a second, but if that's what you believe, you're not going to like the SAFE Act. Most of this money would go towards paper ballot and manual counting requirements. Great, we're upgrading our election systems to the 18th century. Now this might surprise some of you, but a paper ballot requirement shows up a lot in election security bills. 14 states that voted in the 2018 midterms used touchscreen computerized machines that didn't meet federal security guidelines because they produce no paper record. This means that voters can't verify their choices and officials can't audit the results. With the rising threat of cyber attacks, people are starting to say, you need to have that stuff backed up with a few trees worth of paper, just in case we detect evidence of interference. You can't hack a piece of paper, well, unless you have a knife. Hey, scissors still beats paper. This would also allow voters to look at their piece of paper and confirm they're voting for the right people, just in case you're one of those guys with thick fingers and a hatred of touchscreens. No, I never want to make it a FaceTime call. And now I guess I'm voting for Jill Stein. Of course there's more going on here than just mandating more paper. It also standardizes a lot of requirements, like manual counting requirements for recounts and audits, and of course providing grants to develop accessible paper valid voting, verification, and casting mechanisms to enhance accessibility of paper ballot voting for individuals with disabilities for voters whose primary language is not English, and for voters with difficulties in literacy. So let's just say you're a state and you've already gotten up to code with all of the cybersecurity voting infrastructure, but you still want a slice of this sweet, sweet funding pie. Well, never fear because you can also use the cash for the acquisition of goods and services from qualified election infrastructure vendors, cyber and risk mitigation training, a security risk and vulnerability assessment of the state's election infrastructure, or the maintenance of election infrastructure itself. I realize I kind of backloaded the description of this SAFE Act, but besides the definition of too much information, when this bill had over 30 pages going over exactly how it plans to audit these elections, that's what this bill would do. McConnell, this one's teed up for you to pass it, should you choose to. Now I'm going to do a bit of a lightning round, as there have been quite a few bills that either haven't passed either chamber of congress yet or are dead in the water, in what's essentially a legislative in memoriam. First, twice 
twice in the last 24 hours, Senate Republicans have blocked legislation aimed at boosting election security. Okay, Wolf, buddy, this is an intervention. The Senate chose not to pass two bills and you're calling it breaking news? You're really pushing it with that one. You realize you can just report the news and people will listen. Anyways, the first of those bills was a bit on the hilarious side. It would have required the campaigns to alert the FBI and Federal Election Commission about foreign offers of assistance. Gee, I wonder what current event inspired that piece of legislation. Yeah, this was a bit of drawling by Democrats in Congress in response to... If somebody called from a country, Norway, we have information on your opponent. Oh, I think I'd want to hear it. The other of those two bills is just kinda boring and would have let the Senate Sergeant at Arms offer voluntary cyber assistance for personal devices and accounts of senators and staff. Aw, it's kinda like a kid teaching his grandparents how to use Facebook. I'm sure the main opponent to this bill was the Sergeant at Arms. So now to some of the more substantial, probably not gonna pass bills. Starting with, remember the critic of the SAFE Act who believed in state election rights? Oh, he wrote his own bill. That's right, enter Illinois Republican Representative Rodney Davis. Although quite frankly, he looks a little too generic to tease here. Kinda like a Sims character before you make the edits. He brought us the Election Security Assistance Act. And well, he is consistent. Basically, this would authorize a similar amount of funds, except instead of creating a ton of new regulations that the funds would be used to get states into compliance with, his act would instead give this money to an election assistance commission, where states could apply for funds to improve their voting infrastructure in ways they deem necessary. That's probably why this bill was a refreshing 54 pages shorter than its competitor bill. As you can tell, I'm a bit page sensitive, so thanks for the assist. Interestingly enough, there were two other election security bills proposed by Democratic 2020 presidential hopefuls, which feels like a bit of a conflict of interest. At least it would if it wasn't Tulsi Gabbard and Amy Klobuchar. Yeah, emphasis on hopeful. Klobuchar's bill is essentially the Senate version of the House SAFE Act we talked about earlier, so if it gets passed, those two will meet in reconciliation and probably become a law. On the other hand, Tulsi Gabbard's bill focuses exclusively on mandating paper ballots without all of the other unrelated regulations that the SAFE Act puts in, and it provides funds for those transitions. So those are the ways that members of Congress are trying to protect our ballots. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I really hope you enjoyed this video. In this democracy, your likes are your votes, so let me know what you think. I really pay attention to that and it's the reason I stopped focusing on the Federal Reserve so much. Remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.